Look, I'm right in the spirit of Christmas. I told you all earlier this week that I am going to have some very, very special guests on for this spectacular, beyond spectacular Christmas Eve Sarah Carter Show podcast. It's so exciting. We have actually two members of AMAC, Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus, and they will be coming on later to join us. But first, I want to talk to you guys about AMAC. Would you pay your hard-earned money to join an organization that actually fought for a government-run healthcare system? No way. Not me. Or an organization that stood against tax cuts for middle-class Americans and small business owners? No way. AMAC offers an alternative to just about every benefit that AARP offers. Just ask Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus, but without all the liberal agenda, guys. Wouldn't you want to belong to an organization that actually fights for your values, like protecting our borders by enforcing common sense immigration laws or supporting small businesses, which at this time of the year, I can't imagine anything greater. I'm going to be talking to Santa and Mrs. Claus about that and standing up for individual God given freedoms. I stand with AMAC and I hope that you will, too. Join today at amac.us slash Carter. That's C-A-R-T-E-R. That's A-M-A-C dot U-S slash Carter. The benefits of membership are great, but the cause is even greater. Join amac.us slash Carter. And without any further delay, from the North Pole, folks, from the North Pole, I have Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus. And I want to know all about the naughty list and the nice list. But first, very suspicious. Santa Claus looks very similar to someone I know, Superman. And Mrs. Claus looks very similar to a superhero I admire and somebody that changed my life, Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Could this be true? <laughs> mirror, mirror, um, you know, everybody looks like someone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good one, Santa. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Mrs. Claus. So I first I wanna say thank you so much for joining the Sarah Carter Show. Santa, you are all decked out and so are you, Mrs. Claus. Tell me what it's what it's like. Are you preparing for the night? What's going on? I mean, the kids out there, we all want to know what's going on because personally, we're kind of tired of this year and we need some happiness and some good cheer. Well, it's time for happiness and good cheer. Uh, you may notice that uh, Mrs. Claus and I can't really reach her through here are uh, in separate locations. Uh, oh. That is because we've been quarantined a little bit from the COVID thing. Uh, I'm here in the Elf Shack, and uh, Mrs. Claus is there at the house, the big house, uh, keeping things uh, keeping things running. And I'm yeah. over here with the elves, and uh, we're working hard to make a very, very Merry Christmas for all the little boys and girls out there. Oh, that's so great, Santa. That's so nice to hear. Mrs. Claus, do you actually help Santa select toys and compile lists, like the naughty list or the nice list? I definitely help him with the naughty list all year <laughs> round. You're on the naughty list, honey. I'm what? Sorry, just but just, I'm wearing just, uh, the candy cane hat. Yeah, sure. That should put me on the good list, right? The nice. Oh, uh, I thought you wanted to be on the naughty list. I think we'll talk about that later. Okay, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> well, it's nice to know that there are still sparks flying between Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus this holiday season because it's been really tough on so many people. They've been kind of like struggling, trapped in homes together all year long. And having to, uh, I guess, overcome being with the same person 24-7 under these crazy lockdowns. Have you all had to suffer through that in the North Pole? We have not. We've been separated for a while, so um, it's been great, actually. <laughs> no. it's. Uh, I'll say I'm getting a little sick of elves and reindeers. Uh, I need a little bit of Mrs. Claus in my life, if you know what I'm talking about, Miss Carter. Well, well, let's start with that. I want I want to start out with the naughty list. We have oh. been through a really tough year, and I think there's a lot of people that are probably going to be on that naughty list. And I I know Santa usually don't tell anybody in advance, and Mrs. Claus, but can you guys fill us in? Give us kind of like an update on who is on your naughty list this year. Well, if I may start, Mrs. Claus, uh, I happen to have one of the lists with me. We decided to do this year is to put the naughty list. Uh, it's the year of naughty. 
Uh, so we put the naughty list on, uh, we wanted to be green and, you know, recycling things like that. So I started putting the naughty list on rolls of toilet paper, which therefore accounts for the shortage of toilet paper. That's what the secret is right there, because there are so many people on the naughty list. That's uh, right. That's right. COVID lockdowns. You really have something that's a great resource, a great resource. One, uh, something that actually nobody could ever find in the beginning of the year in any grocery stores or even on Amazon. Part of that might be uh, Santa's fault for thinking that this was a good idea. And uh, there was just so <laughs> many people on the naughty list. We had to buy up most of the toilet paper. Uh, having said that, the naughty list starts off a uh, little Hunter B. Oh, yeah. He's on the top of the naughty list almost every year. Hunter B seems to love the snow and ho, ho, ho's. Uh, <laughs> there's a little Gavin N who's on here for some rank hypocrisy. An Andrew C for straight up murder. Mm. Uh, Beetlejuice. I'll let mm. you think about that one. Mm. Um, Adam S for a lot of lying. And Santa knows when you're lying. Uh, Nancy and Chuck, they've been on it for a number of years. Uh, something called Ann Typha. They're on for sure. Mm -hmm. LDB, he's on it. Uh, very naughty. Let's see. Governments, almost all governments, but especially China, Iran, North Korea. There's Bill and Hillary. There's Juicy Smollier. There's Eric Fartwell. Is that correct? Did I say it right? Yes, uh, you did. Yep. Yeah. Mrs. Claus, you're always on the list, but that's for personal reasons. <laughs> Donald, Donald T, he made both lists as well, which is no surprise there. The entire Biden family, Dr. Jill. Joe, the Biden dog, is also on the naughty list. Chewing Ooh, a Trump why, toy, we why, don't think. Why? That. Yeah, if you're chewing a Trump toy, we don't think that's very much in the spirit of unity and right. harmony and giving. Right. Is this the uh, first dog to ever be on the naughty list? Well, it's the first public dog. We've put a couple of dogs on the naughty list throughout the years. I tell you, let's see who else we've got here. The <laughs> media, the media is on the list. Big goes, time. You see the list. This is one of a lot of lists, but the media is on it big time. Mrs. Claus. The media, we've talked about this. We don't get to see each other, but they're ignoring the Hunter Biden story. They're yes, cheering they are. the the they're cheering against hydroxychloroquine to hurt President Trump. They're they were sad that Kassam Soleimani, who's been on the naughty list for a number of years, was was taken out. That's crazy. They pretend Antifa doesn't exist. They ignore riots. It goes on and on and on. The list is long. Gretchen W is on it. It just goes on and on and on. Uh, so we don't want to go through the entire naughty list. But we'll run out of toilet paper. Is, is Don Lemon on the naughty list? Don Lemon, uh, we don't really care. He's <laughs> <laughs> on, but nobody's talking about him here at Santa's workshop. No, um, there is. There are uh, no Don Lemon action figures, Mrs. Claus. Um, there might be a few. What do you think? Well, we can make it happen if you want it to happen, Mrs. Claus. That's pretty much the way things work around here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's talk about this because that's a really important list, Santa. I mean, that's a long list. And I think there's a lot of people out there that would agree with you. First, let's start with Gavin N. in California is what I'm guessing. This is mm. Governor Newsom. What has he done that you would say is so naughty that he can't even make the nice list? <laughs> well, uh, which you, would you like to start, honey, or shall I do it? Well, he doesn't practice what he preaches. Mm, hypocrisy from a politician. So strange. Oh. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and you've been to California, haven't you, Mrs. Claus? Yes, I have. And how do people there feel about him? Everybody is very upset, and they all say he's naughty. And they all say he's naughty. So he's keeping everybody locked up, right, Santa? Yes. What yeah, is well, he's, uh, he's put into some place some uh, very extraordinary measures to, quote, keep people safe while ignoring them completely uh, in his own life. Things like, you know, let me close all the restaurants down, yet I will attend a 50 or 22-person party at the French Laundry, one of the most expensive restaurants in the world, with the bar tab was about fifteen thousand dollars. And if I didn't get caught, I wouldn't have said a darn thing about it. <laughs> yeah, that's. Are the there other the people that behave that way that have been on the naughty list? I'm just guessing, like maybe the leader of North Korea. That's what that sounds oh, like oh, to oh, me. Oh, oh, oh. He's always on the naughty list. Uh, comparing the two isn't out of the. It's, it's certainly not out of bounds. I would say that uh, when you say. Uh, lockdown for thee, but not for me. You're making a strong point, and Santa doesn't like it, does he, Mrs. Claus? 
That's correct. You don't like that at all. <laughs> what about Andrew Cuomo? He's another bad boy. He's like, you know, been really nasty to the folks in his own home state of New York, right? Mm -hmm. What's going on with him? Well, Andrew C. is definitely on the naughty list. Uh, again, hypocrisy is tremendous. Uh, when you uh, have a problem and most deaths in your your actual state and you get a, an award for having and write a book about having uh, done a great job during COVID, I think things are a little bit off kilter in this world and Santa calls it like it is. Right. But the person that's been going after him, and this is for you, Mrs. Claus, is Janice Dean. Where is she? <laughs> well, she is not happy with Cuomo. No. And so she's been really nice, I think. Yes. She's always well, nice. She's funny incredibly you should nice. say that because I have, I have a little bit of the nice list here. Uh, on page one, we have Janice Dean. Yes. And Janice Dean. And Janice Dean, and Janice Dean, and Janice Dean. She is always number one on, on the nice list. There's no doubt, probably the nicest person on the planet. And she has been going after uh, Governor Cuomo because her parents, uh, her mother and father-in-law were placed back in nursing homes. And that was certainly the governor's order. And they passed away and they never even got to see him. And she is calling it like it is. That's what that is was. that, you know, that's a really that's that's a really good point, Santa. I'm glad she's all over the nice list because she brought so much attention to what was happening in New York. And so many people, so many people were educated about how terrible Governor Cuomo handled the situation because the people that are on your naughty list, the media didn't want to report on it. In fact, they they still aren't reporting on all of the mistakes and all the horrible things that happened in New York City because of COVID-19. All those poor people that were, you know, sitting in elderly facilities, nursing homes, assisted living, and they just got they got really sick from this terrible illness, right? And then no one got to see them and they were separated from their families, dying alone. It's about as tragic as it gets. Right. She's right. been calling him out. And as she should. As she should. And I want to go, you know, maybe that should take us to the nice list. I mean, we've got so many people on this naughty list, Santa. Well, you know what? I'm going to allow you to pick some countries, Santa and Mrs. Claus. Let's, before we go to the nice list, we know Janice Dean's taken whole page one because there's so many people on page one of the naughty list that probably we, it doesn't matter. Um, let's go straight over to countries. What countries are on the naughty list? There's got to be countries. Well, we don't have pages for the naughty list. We have roles. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, certainly, I mentioned uh, China having come up with this whole China virus, Wuhan virus, whatever you want to call it, uh, and having that come out and then hiding it and not talking about it and stopping it. China's always on the been on the naughty list for a while here now. Iran, North Korea, they're on the naughty list. Did uh, Russia make the list? Well, we don't we don't talk about Russia. Santa's a little afraid of Vladimir Putin. Okay. The, not, uh, what about what about Vladimir? I mean, Vladimir Mrs. Putin's not on any list, ma'am. No list. No, no list. He's not. He doesn't. It's he it's doesn't it's exist in the database. Okay, wait a minute. I need to take a stop here and ask Santa and Mrs. Claus about this. When they're not on a list, is this kind of like Switzerland? You're trying to play neutral. Are you afraid the North Pole's going to be attacked? What's oh, going on oh, here? No, we just can't find any information on him. It's weird. It's ha never happened before. We looked hard. I'm looking right now. Mm, nope. I got nothing. <laughs> nothing. Oh, nothing for Vladimir Putin. Nope, not even his. Exist. Not even his shirtless photo. Not even well, his shirtless photo. Mrs. Claus has one or two of those, but <laughs> I'm sorry, Mrs. Claus. Uh, sometimes uh, Santa talks out of turn. He's been having a little bit of the eggnog. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Claus ain't around. You look I, a little thin, Santa. Uh, you uh, well. Some weight? Yeah, and, and honey. What's up with the, and what's up with your beard, Santa? It's moving around a lot. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, Santa's got a little trouble taking care of himself without Mrs. Claus around. Uh, Santa's getting getting muscles now. It's great. It's a good oh. thing. Uh, Mrs. Claus usually keeps me a little more rotund, but without her cooking and all these dang elves running around and reindeer stuff, reindeer stuff takes a lot of work to you know get rid of that reindeer mess. So uh, Santa's been working out. Well, I think everybody's going to need a little bit of working out after uh, the COVID-20, right? After the, I call it the COVID-20, after being locked down for like an entire year. 
What about the nice list? Let's talk about the nice list because oh. there's a lot of folks that I think deserve to be on the nice list. No question about it. Uh, on the list, other than Janice Dean, we've got uh, President we've got Trump. President Trump, very much on the nice list. You want to talk about him, Mrs. Claus? Well, he's on the nice list for so many reasons. You know, it's America first. And oh. that's the number one reason why he's on the nice list. He's, what I've else? got him on both lists, honey. Um, but I've what? also got, I've got you on both lists, too. So it's not a bad thing. <laughs> Uh, oh, 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 oh. Well, some people that, would say some people would say he's on the naughty list too. Mm -hmm. Yes, they would, and that's not always a bad thing. Look at Mrs. Claus; she's just scrumptious. Oh, <laughs> uh, I've got vaccine developers. Vaccine developers are very much on the uh, on the nice list. They've done a heck of a job, unprecedented right. this vaccine out this short period of time, and it's pretty amazing. And they work with the president to get it done, and I think that's incredible. We've got uh, some of the few truth seekers in the media. There's a little girl named Sarah C. I think it's Sarah Carter. She's on the list. We think she's done a great job, and we just think she's fantastic. Oh, yes, thank absolutely. You thank you, Santa. She qualifies on the nice list. I, I, all I, I will leave out some gingerbread cookies for you. And take oh, some home. Santa, Santa and, likes that. And, and how he about that. and how about some whiskey? <laughs> Santa accepts. It gets cold. It out, gets cold up in that sleigh. I'll leave out whiskey and cookies for Santa. That's, That's because my, I'm on the nice list. Any God. other folks on that nice list? Because I, I agree with you on our first responders, our yes. hospitals, our teachers, right? All the people that have done so much for our country um, to get us through this mess, you know, and and for the parents that have had to actually like stay Teach. home with their kids. Yeah, right. Oh. Right. So that's probably something that I think a lot of people don't think about is like all the little things that people have done individually, right? To um, to keep going under all these hard times. Because a lot of people, I mean, it's been tough. It has not been easy on Americans. Extremely tough. No question about it. We've got a list of, uh, well, let's just, in generalities, we'll say 90% are above groups. These groups, 90% above them are all on the nice list. Uh, nurses, Firefighters, police officers, doctors, first responders, military, 90% are all on the nice list. There's always a little bit of a bad apple here and there, and that's what happens. And Santa calls them out, gives them a piece of coal. You know, that's the way it works. Uh, but but most of them, unbelievable. Uh, you've always got to – whoop, Santa's having some trouble here. Oh, Mrs. Santa. Claus, Mrs. Claus is also my, uh, my personal groomer here. I'm uh, so I'm sorry missing. I'm not there to help you. Oh, not as sorry as I am, honey. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's true. I'm glad you brought up all of the, you know, our all of the folks that especially our firefighters, our police officers. We've seen a lot of people over the last year and especially, I think, around the world. Um, you know, facing a lot of hardships. One of the things that we've talked about before Santa and Mrs. Claus is the businesses, businesses in our communities that have been affected, people losing their jobs, um, maybe not able to give the way that they would normally to their family members. A lot of people aren't going to be making their mortgages. They've lost their restaurants this year. What can we do? What do you think we need to do to try to bring that Christmas spirit back? Is there any way that we can bring that spirit of Christmas back to our communities, our country, back to the world for that matter, you know, after such a tough, tough year? Well, Mrs. Claus and I like to, to, to be optimists all the time, and we like to look on the positive side of things. Yes, there are many people on the naughty list, and it's a naughty, naughty year, as you can see on my head. But mm -hmm. we go for the positive, for hope. We go for, you know, when the, when the chips are down and people are having a tough time, that's when families and people and countries come together, and then they do the right thing, and they help other individuals. That's what it's about. It's about the goodness of this time of year and that spirit of giving and goodness. Uh, and if we can get that spirit flowing through people again, uh, we think 2021 is going to turn around and head in the right direction. Yes. I do too. What do you think, Mrs. Claus? We just got to hang in there. You know, we got to, we got to spread the love. We've got to, you know, call our families on FaceTime and uh, maybe do Christmas Eve uh, online for, you know, on the TV and, and sit around with family and, 
you know, do church from home and pray and, uh, you know, just look after each other. I agree. I think that's really important. I think that's a great message for all of us. And before I let you go, because I know you're working so hard in the North Pole to get all those toys ready for all the kids and to spread that <laughs> Christmas cheer, do you have any parting words of wisdom for us before you head out for the Christmas Eve night? Mrs. Claus. No, you go, Santa. Okay, well, Santa just wants to say to everybody out there, Santa knows whether you've been naughty or nice, so be good for goodness sake. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Claus. I wrote those words myself. And we love everyone, and we love all the children, and we can't wait to see you and visit you and be there Christmas Eve and open your presents Christmas morning. I'm about ready to see Mrs. Claus. Let me tell you that. Get me <laughs> out of this elf shack, honey. I'm ready to come home. There I can't wait to see you, Santa. Yeah. <laughs> there is no bah humbug here at the Sarah Carter Show. Thank you so much, <laughs> Santa and Mrs. Claus. Again, striking resemblance to Superman and Buffy, but I don't know. Boy, those are some good-looking individuals, I'll tell you that. Thank you. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Again, for everyone out there, this is the miraculous Dean Kane and Christy Swanson. They're great. They have uh they're they're amazing, they're wonderful, and they're spreading Christmas cheer. And I hope, I hope you both have a beautiful Christmas Eve with your families and that you are blessed throughout the next year and I, I tell you, I welcome you back anytime on the Sarah Carter Show. Thank you so Thank much for sharing. You. Merry Christmas to you. Too. Merry Christmas. Hugs. <laughs>